So, in phenomenological research, um, I call it best practices. And I was going to put a whole bunch of things, but then I was like, well, no, really the only best practice that, I mean, there's a lot of good practices, but the best practice that you can have, uh, okay, E, P, C, H, E, and this is basically bracketing. Right? Bracketing, the bracketing of research bias and expectation, right? Begin with a discussion of your own interpretation to, or of the phenomena, and I need to change that, of the phenomena prior to conducting your research. What does that mean? Okay, I know, um, I gotta think of an example. Um, okay, imagine that I'm doing research on um, the, the, the growth of hip hop within uh, Western culture, right? There's a time at which we can sort of definitively identify as the beginning of hip hop, mid to late 70s, right? We know now that hip hop is, is, is a behemoth of an industry. And I want to track the growth of hip hop um, within, within the industry through a phenomenological account from former ARs, right? So I'm going to go to um, AR reps from all the big companies, Def Jam and this and that, and talk to the, all these different ARs and say, hey, tell me when you signed the, this dude, and tell me when you signed that guy, and tell me when you signed this group, and tell me when you signed this, this girl, and tell me when, and so on and so forth, right? So I'm going to talk to AR representatives for major labels, and I'm going to get their accounts of sort of the growth of hip hop, and use that as my basis. If I'm if I'm using it, um, what I might want to say uh, at the beginning of my research when I go to type it all up is I am a huge hip hop junkie, so my interpretation of the growth of hip hop might be biased, and I might just talk about hip hop's growth in very you know in in, in very uh, optimistic sense. The reason why hip hop was growing was because um, we just came off of civil rights and. It was less about black and white, and you know, African Americans had a, a new form of self-expression that was that was uh, conducive to mainstream and corporation. Blah blah blah. That's one version, right? But that might might not be the reason why hip hop became what hip hop became. Another version might be hip hop became what hip hop became because people in the burbs were really upset to the mundane life that they were living, and angry black kids were were out talking about um, part of my French, fuck the police, and uh, and, and, you know, uh, and WA was on the scene, it was very, very violent, and, and they can live, and, and that's one interpret, and so on, and so on, and so forth. What you want to do is you want to bracket yourself, right? You want to say, um, you know, I, uh, I'm not a fan of the genre um, that could influence my interpretation. I am a fan of the genre. That might influence my interpretation. In the example of the, the, the woman in a domestic, um, the women in a uh, um, woman's shelter, um, if you're a woman conducting the research, you might be biased, right? Um, you could say something along the lines of, you know, um, as a woman who has experienced this phenomenon, dot, 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 dot. The research that I've done, some of the articles that I've published, I've published on um, Jamaican, um, the Jamaican condition, and I, and I begin the, the research by saying, as a Jamaican, I know what it's like to, dot, 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 have a family who's in this, dot, 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 right? So what you're doing is you're, you're basically contextualizing your bias, is, uh, to be technical, is what you're really doing. That's what bracketing really is, right? I'm contextualizing my bias. I am um, a Jamaican, so I am going to interpret the experience, and I think I would have a better interpretation of the experience than a non-Jamaican, maybe. Not necessarily, but maybe, because I live it, right? That's who I am. Um, and so on and so on. So what you want to do in your research is just let the reader know, hey, reader, um, I am going to try and be as objective as possible in this research. However, to let you know, um, my personal experience is sort of antithetical to the research that I'm doing, or it's exactly like the research that I'm doing. And because of this, it's going to it could potentially influence my interpretation. The reader is going to now read with the, with that with that um, with your brackets in mind and check to make sure that you were objective. And if you are extremely objective, then they say, wow, this is, a, this is amazing research. So bracketing really is good, right? For example, it could be the case that um, you do not believe, uh, you do not support um, uh, gay marriages. And you might say that. I don't support gay marriages. I don't think that homosexual men and women should have the ability to get married, period. However, my research is on um, the likelihood of uh, gay marriages in the next X amount of years 
and I'm going to interview members of the population to see that. And then you conduct very objective research, and someone will say, well, kudos to you. You know, you don't support it, but you did good research, um, and your findings were whatever they were, right? So you want to make sure that you always contextualize, you bracket, uh, you bracket your bias as much as possible. Um, within um, phenomenological methodology, right, within the methodology proper, um, I want to talk, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on discussing this method, right? All right, um, phenomenological methodology. The first thing that you want to do, and this is very simple, is you want to identify a phenomenon to study, right? So the first thing that you want to do is you want to identify... So you identify the thing you want to study. I want to study Z. I want to study this thing. I want to study women's trans, um, transition into um, uh, women's shelter. I want to study... Uh, I want to study childhood, um, I want to study the effects of childhood obesity on single parent households, which is pretty good research idea, actually. <laughs> I want to study whatever it might be, right? I want to study this, Z, first thing. Then the next thing that you want to do, too, and I think my account varies a little bit from uh, Creswell, two, you want to bracket the interpretation, uh, you want to bracket and interpret researcher bias and expectations. So you're going to bracket, right? Uh, let's say childhood obesity in single parent household. I am a product of a single parent household, however I am not obese. That might um, influence my, my, my bias. As a quick side note, when I was young, I don't know if they still do it, they had, this is a complete tangent, I'm, I apologize, but they had the president, I just, you know, anyway. So this thing called the Presidential Physical Fitness Award. I got I got this award from Ronald Reagan. It was like a little blue emblem with like a like a embroidered eagle, and it was like Presidential Physical Fitness. I thought it was the coolest thing. I don't know if they still do Presidential Fitness Awards. So if anybody watches these videos, if you're this deep into the video now, uh, if anyone's gonna watch this, uh, the Presidential Physical Fitness Award was pretty interesting. So I don't know if they're still doing that. Anyway, so you want to bracket? It's a huge tangent. Uh, you want to bracket your bias. Obviously, you're going to collect your data. Right? Um, part of this, I guess in between this, would be like selecting participants. Right? So you get your participants. They're all talking about the same. You're going to go through this process of reduction, right? Identification of seminal points, interpretation, description. I'm going to identify what the points are. I'm going to interpret what the individual said, we're appropriate, we're not appropriate, I'm just going to allow them to describe. And I'm going to attempt to arrive at and formulate themes for the experience, right? So the theme for experience Z might be dot, 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 dot. So that was four, which is uh, interpretation, description, Number five, um, now you want to describe the themes, right? Description of themes. Textual, uh, textural, T-E-X-T-U-R-A-L, textual. Textual description. This is what, right? What participants experience. The textual description is what they experienced. The structural Structural description is how they experienced it, right? So what a participant experienced is a textual description. How the participant experienced it is a structural description, right? So um, participant A's uh, structural description of her transition um, uh, gave light to the difficulties in transitioning into a woman's shelter. Dot, 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 dot. How I experience is different from what I experience, right? That how I experience is a structural description. You know, my experience of it really left me feeling bop, 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 bop. Um, in experiencing, the first thing that I did was I, you know, located a bed in the corner of the property because I thought it would be better to be in a corner than the open room and blah, 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 right? 
two different different types of uh, description. All right, and then um, the last part, uh, essence of the experience. Right, the essence of the experience is a combination of the textual and the structural. Right, so what roughly what the experience is. The essence, and then we say essence of Z, right? The essence of the phenomenological experience of Z by these participants is a combination of their collective textual description and their structural description. So we generalize, oops, sorry. And actually, I want to do it like this, my conditional. Uh, we can generalize, we can offer a generalized. Uh, we can offer a generalized account of Z because we have multiple um, descriptions, both textual and structural descriptions, from multiple parties of Z. Where there are redundancies in their descriptions, obviously we recognize that there's overlap. And where there's overlap, we recognize that the, the individuals have spoken, at least theoretically, to some essence of, of the thing, um, whatever that thing might be. Uh, with that, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this segment of um, the video on methods of qualitative research. Uh, I'm going to continue with the second half of phenomenological research, and then after phenomenological research, we'll move on to another form of research. With that being said, uh, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Goodbye.